All right, everybody, this is the third and definitely final um, area of segment segments. So, you know, it's just a part of the whole video thing. Because even I'm getting sick of hearing my own voices, and I don't think my jokes are funny anymore. So, uh, if I need to find the area of a segment of this circle here, I'm going to uh, remember number one what the segment is. Uh, the segment itself is the part defined by uh, the area, if I'm trying to find area, of the chord. Uh, in between the chord, I should say, sorry, and the circle itself. Obviously, I've been doing these problems for like way, way, way too long. So, this is my segment. If you saw how I set it up last time, it's set up again like that on the side table here. Uh, that's my segment, and I take it away. So, I'm really looking for this. That's the area of segment. But, as always, we have to go through uh, a couple other areas to try to find that one. So, I'm going to set up the problem like I would before. And I'm going to use the whole sheet of paper to do this. I'm going to draw a nice little triangle here, or rectangle here. It's supposed to have triangles in it, so I always think, you know, it's probably a triangle, but it's not. It's a rectangle. It's got four sides, so it's a rectangle, and they're all supposedly 90 degree angles. Once again, you'll probably have to use your avatar brain. So on this, I go from largest piece to smallest piece, or uh, at least component parts. Because in this one, if you look, the triangle is significantly uh, smaller in comparison to, or uh, the relationship between this is much more even than it was in the previous ones that we've done, uh, particularly the 60 degree angle, where the triangle was a huge part of the sector. Whereas in this case, uh, the sector is broken almost uh, more or less evenly with the segment and the triangle. It actually seems that the uh, segment itself is actually bigger than the triangle. So a little bit of a diff different situation here, but we need to break it all up into the component parts. So, of course, the first component part is our circle. So on my little form here, I'm going to put circle there, and then on I go. Stop worrying about the circle for a second, and then I'm going to move on over to the sector right there. So the next thing that I'm going to do on this piece of paper, the next thing I'm going to do, that's so weird, the next girl I'm going to call for America Top, top Model. I'm no Tyra Banks. So the sector comes next. Um, the next bonus piece would be the triangle, which in this case is actually not the... Uh, third largest unit. It's actually the smallest part. But it still comes next as because we have to take it away. So you want what you're looking for left over in the end. So down here I'm going to deal with triangle. And if you remember all of these are even though I didn't specifically mention them I'm going to now. That all of these are areas. Because that's what I'm trying to find. It's sort of like if I'm cutting carpet into parts. I need to sort of figure out how big the whole carpet is and then how big a portion of it is and then I can figure out what's left over. And the last one is of course our segment. And in this segment of segment of area the segment is green. So let's take that away. So we're gonna go through the whole process one last time and I'm going to try to go uh, a little faster than Heath is probably comfortable with if you're watching the video. Uh, he's probably ripping me anyway because I talk too fast. But what are you going to do? I'm part mongrel, I think. So I'm going to deal with the area of the circle first. And if you recall, the area formula for a circle is pi r squared. All the little kids are singing it. You should be singing it too. Area of a circle is pi r squared. So I'm just going to write that down. In this problem, my um, r is 10. Uh, so, these are the ones I did in class today, by the way, in case you didn't know that, but I figured this would be a nice review for you. So I'm just going to type in pi times 10, and I'm going to square 10. I did it the different way this time. I didn't use the caret and then the 2. 314.159, so the 5 is going to knock that 1 up to a 2, so 314.2, which makes a lot of sense considering pi is 3.14 and on and on and on forever, and 10 squared is 100, so 300 from 3, that sounds pretty good, so I'm okay with that. 
So I'm going to go to my little chart here and say that the area is 314. Point two. And that would be unit squared, assuming we're using units as a generic. And I am, because why wouldn't I? I'm going to put this on this mage paper. I'm going to have to eventually remake these, I think. But I thought I could save them, but I'm guessing no now. Anyway, on we go. The next part of uh, significance is the sector. There it is. And what I know about the sector in this case is that uh, there is a relationship between the uh, size of the sector and the circle. So if I could use a proportion here, a proportion, way better than an amateur portion, I'm going to make a proportion based on comparisons of measure and comparisons of area. And of course, I'm going to use a part over the whole uh, relationship. My sector is 120 degrees. Why am I even bothering with the colors if I'm not going to use the specific ones you may be asking yourself? And it's because I couldn't figure out what on earth I did with my red marker until just now. So I'll finish out sector in the color it's defined as. The part is the 120 degrees. I got that right here. It's the value of the central angle. It's also the uh, value of the, or the measure, should I say. It's also the measure of the arc because the measure of the central angle and the measure of the arc, which is the outside piece right here, happen to be the same. So, that's the part that the sector makes up, and this is the part of the whole circle. Would it really be a part of a whole circle? It's the whole thing? Uh, I'll leave that for the philosophers. Area, the part is what we're looking for. So this is sector, area. The bottom part would be the circle. Well, over here, we found out that it's 314.2 units squared. So I'm going to do that. And if you remember from before, I just do cross multiply first. So I'm going to do 314.2 times 120, 37,704. I'm going to set that equal to 360 times sector. Because sector acts as a variable here. Even the name can be the variable. You can use pictures or whatever. In order to get sector or by itself, I'm going to divide 360. So my sector area is equal to 37704 divided by 360, so 104.73, so I'm going to round that to 104.7, and that's going to be units squared, so 104.7 units squared, and that makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, if you look at the circle, the whole thing is 304.2, and this makes up about, if I drew a line here, one, two, three equal parts, so makes a lot of sense. That's a reasonable answer, because a third of uh, 300 is 100, so the 14 gets gobbled up by this 4.7. So that makes a lot of sense, so I'm happy with the sector area. Now, the next part I have to deal with, if I'm trying to figure out what the area of this green segment is, I'm going to start looking at the sector itself as its own individual unit. So. I'm going to go down a level. It's not. I'm not just looking at atoms anymore. I have to look at protons and electrons and neutrons. So I've got this situation. So in order to get this, what if I just remove this? Aha, uh -huh, that would work. And then I have this left over. And this is a shape that I actually know how to deal with. I've got my triangle there. Three sides. One, two, three. I know how to find the area of a triangle, so let's use that information to try to discover uh, what the area of the segment is. So in order to do that, I have to consider the fact that this is a triangle. And if you forgot what the area formula for a triangle is, the area formula for a triangle is, of course, base times height. And because there are two triangles in every rectangle, uh, you divide by two. The visualization of this is, say, I have a rectangle that is four by three. I'm going to break this into equal parts. The, four, the three actually means something. It means one, two, three rows. The four means something as well. 
it means one, two, three, four columns. If you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, there are twelve boxes, so that would be twelve units squared. And if we do the formula, base times height, well, base would be four, and height would be three, so it is twelve. So math really does have a purpose. It's base times height because four columns times three rows gives me 12, and base times height is 12 units. Now, for the triangle, a triangle only makes up, and this is the easiest way to show it. I could technically make a triangle in the middle, but it's hard to show that it's uh, actually two parts out of four or whatever. Um, the, you can see that the triangle is half of that rectangle. So it's base times height divided by 2. That's how I figured that out. Uh, to show you what I was talking about before that I said was hard. It's really not hard. I don't know why I said that it was. This triangle is this really long thing, so what if I made one that looked like this? Assuming this is the middle, I break it into parts. I break it into 1, 2, 3, 4 parts. Two of those parts are here. 2 over 4, and then 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 4 twice. So a triangle is half of the rectangle, which is the same as dividing by 2, or that's where 1 half base times height comes from. I don't know why I felt the need to go into that for the 5,000th time, but I did, so, you know, we'll just move on together. Now, uh, as you know, the thing about finding the base and height specifically requires you to touch the right angle, so I'm going to t have to make one, because there's not one. So, I'm going to do the perpendicular bisector gimmick again. I'm going to bisect this angle into two equal parts. That's why it's a bisector. The bisector in this case means that it breaks it into two equal parts. I'm drawing this out so it's a little bit easier to see. And hopefully I'm not writing on the one below it, but I'm sure that I am because I always do. Now, I've got this whole thing going, and by being a perpendicular bisector, this makes a nice 90-degree angle. That works, so I can touch the right angle now, and all I have to do is base times...